Hi everyone, welcome back to another video at Talent 500 channel. My name is Kushal Vijay and I'm a software engineer and a content creator on YouTube. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the most important questions with respect to risk architecture, risk framework. It's very important for any full stack developer to know about the risk framework or the risk architecture. We'll be walking through some of the most important questions that can be asked to you in an interview. So without any further ado, let's get started. If you haven't watched our previous videos yet, I would highly recommend you to please watch them as well after this video. And if you have any doubts, please make sure to comment down below and like the video and subscribe to the channel for more such amazing videos. So let's get started. So let's get started with the REST API interview series. If I talk about the today's agenda, it will be around the advanced questions of REST, uh, which is the architectural style. We'll be talking a lot about that in, in the upcoming slides. And we'll also see what to expect in the next video. So for the first question is describe the five constraints of the rest architectural style and their benefits. If the interviewer asks you this question, you have to explain all those five constraints along with the benefits associated with them one by one. So basically every restful API should align with the five architectural constraints a rest framework has out of which the first is uniform interface. Now, what is a uniform interface? It's an interface between the client and the server that allows standardized communication between both of them in a single language. Further, it helps to decouple the client and the server. Second is client and server. Client and server model helps in order to separate the concerns between the client and the server. Basically, it helps client and server to evolve and operate independently. And it's also help in portability and scalability of the whole architecture. The third is stateless. Now, what is stateless? Stateless is a communication protocol wherein the server stores no information about the session state. So for example, if a user goes to a website, that particular duration for which the user stays at the website is considered as a session in REST architectural style. There is no storage of session states. Now how it is helpful? It improves performance by reducing the server load. Fourth is cacheable. Server has this ability to mark responses as cacheable or non-cacheable. Now, how it is helpful, clients and intermediate layers are able to cache based on how, if the server wants them to cache it or not, which further helps in improving the performance and scalability because when things are cached, they don't have to make the complete request again and again. They can get the data since it's already there in the cache. And it also reduces the client and the server interaction because then you don't have to make further request to get the same data. Fifth is layered system. What are the layers? Layers which are there in between the client and server, which helps in load balancing or proxy servers, which helps to improve the scalability and the security of the whole system. Layers have separate responsibilities. They can interact with each other. So this is the first question. Now let's move on to our next question, which is explain the HTTP request method supported by REST and when they are used. So basically REST APIs are based on HTTP request, which, and each of these requests or verbs have different tasks. The first is get method, which is used to request data from the server. Second is post method, which is used to submit data to create new resource on a server defined URL. Put has a similar ability, a bit of difference with respect to post method. It is used to update a resource at the client defined URL. Delete method is used to remove the resource from the server. Options method, which is used to return request methods supported by a service. Head method, which is used to return meta information such as response headers. So for example, when you see an image in your device, there is a lot of data associated with it. For example, the dimensions, the size, the name, and that is called the metadata. And head method is used to fetch that data. Patch method. Patch method is used to modify the part of the resource on the server. So these are the common uh, HTTP requests or verbs which are based on REST APIs. Let's move on to our next question, which is what's the difference between put and the post methods? We already discussed brief about it in the last question, but here you have to explain it in de detail to the interviewer. What is the difference between both these methods, put and the post? So when it comes to put method, 
put method is idempotent in nature whereas post method is not idempotent in nature now what does idempotent nature mean so for example in put method if you make multiple request it will give you the same result whereas when you make multiple request uh in via post method it will give you multiple copies of the same resource second difference is put responses are not cacheable whereas in post methods the server responses are cacheable depending upon if you have provided the proper cache control headers then comes the third difference put method updates or replaces target resource with the request payload whereas in post method the request payload is processed by the web server based on the target resource so these are the simple differences between the put and the post method moving on to our next question explain what statelessness means in rest architecture now it's a very important question uh you have to explain the consequences as well as what does that mean now statelessness means that the client and the server don't store the information about each other's state so every time client makes a request the user goes to the website on the server the session is being stored right so in statelessness the client and server don't store information about each other's state now since the server stores no information it treats each request from the client as a new request now there are consequences associated with it for example the client request contains all the information required for the server to process the request now since we are not storing anything any state from the client send every time client make a request they have to send all the information required to process that request since server is not storing anything the client application is responsible for storing session state so these are the consequences now let's move on to our next question so what is the difference between ajax and rest you might have used ajax also if you have dealt with full stack development so ajax client can make a restful request to a rest api for example a get request but ajax isn't an architectural style it's a web development technique for client side application so this is the general difference between a ajax and rest rest apis can be accessed by ajax clients but they aren't inherently implemented with ajax they can be accessed via ajax definitely ajax clients you cannot use ajax to implement rest apis so let's move on to our next question what is the difference between soap and rest so you have to explain one by one what is soap uh, then what is rest api and how they are different so if i talk about the general difference which is soap is a protocol which is used in web applications whereas rest is the architectural style the data format is limited to xml in soap protocol whereas rest allows different data formats like text json html xml yaml and and uh, so on and so forth soap is a heavyweight and requires more bandwidth whereas rest is lightweight and require less bandwidth uh when it comes to soap calls cannot be cached whereas rest provides the ability to cache the calls so this is a, these are general differences between soap and the rest let's move on to our next question what are cache control headers so in a web architecture cache control headers basically help you attain caching ability and they are used to control the caching so as we already discussed before caching is something which server and clients do to improve performance and scalability so that client does not have to make request again and again to capture the similar data now once once you will explain cache control headers you also have to explain to the interviewer what are the types of cache control headers now there are three types of cache control headers one is public now what are public cache control headers when the sources are marked as public they can be cached by any component between the client and the server then comes the private cache control headers these are the resources which are marked private and can only be cached by the client only third is no store now in this third type browsers aren't allowed to cache as response and the data must always be pulled like all the information needs to be pulled every time from the client this type of cache control is basically used when there is a transaction of or when there is sensitive data involved like bank details or passwords so we cannot cache 
such sans- sensitive data which is against uh, law as well so hence the such kind of data cannot be uh, cached and every time a request is made the complete data is being pulled from the client side to the server moving on to our next question which is what are, what are the major security issues faced by the web services now you have to explain it in this manner since a web application is continuously on the internet uh, you know operating on the internet there are definitely security issues because there is a uh, you know data transactions happening with each and every request that is coming to the server in response going to the client so web services often deal with a lot of confidential information security becomes a major issue uh, since we are dealing with a lot of data so in order to deal with security issues there are two things that one a developer needs to keep in mind which is encryption and the authentication so a web service may consist of multiple applications and every application may interact with each other there could be a possibility of potentially weak node among all and hence it is always recommended to encrypt data so that they can remain confidential at any cost even though there is a single point of failure there is a one weak node in the whole uh, web architecture if the data is encrypted between the layers between each and every service the data will not be sacrificed in at any cost since it's encrypted so encryption is one of the major thing that to practice the third second is authentication the issues arises when dealing with a large number of users obviously when there are a large number of users there is a large number of large amount of data and if authentic and authentication helps to prevent other people from accessing other users data and also helps to track what the current user is actually doing since they are authenticated the people who are handling the the admin of the website know what the user is actually doing on the website and when they logged in when they logged out and stuff moving on to our next question which is what are the common http response status codes you see when working with the rest api so this is a very common question which is being asked and many people tend to answer wrong because there are very similar uh, response status codes and it's widely used so let's discuss about them so http response status code tell the client so response status codes are being returned with the response body to give some information to the client that this is what has happened to your request the request can be get or post now some of the codes that you will see in http responses are 200 which means uh, the request succeeded it's a okay response 201 which is which means the resource has been successfully created the third is 400 which is a bad request uh, which means the request was not fulfilled due to an error in the request such as a type or a miss, missing data so every time you create an object you need to give all the required parameters to create that object on the server side now for example you made a typo in you know some field or you miss out data uh, while while creating the request object it will turn your 400 bad request then comes 401 unauthorized uh, which means the request was not fulfilled because the client is not un- authenticated or authorized to access the requested resource so for example you're trying to open a cloud file and you don't have access to that file then you might get this response because you don't have access to it moving on to the remaining uh http response codes which is 403 forbidden now when the request was not fulfilled because the client is authenticated but not authorized to access the requested resource now this is 403 now there is a very slight difference between 403 and 401 the request was not fulfilled because the client is not authenticated this is 401 and 403 is the client was authenticated but not authorized to access the resource now 404 404 you might have already heard it not found you're requesting a, to open a cloud file but it does not exist at that location so the resource is not found 500 is the internal server error the request was not fulfilled due to an unexpected problem with the server next is 502 bad gateway so the request was not fulfilled due to an invalid response from an upstream server so there could be possibility 
that a sir you made a request and the the re- server's request made a further request and that gave an invalid response hence your request is is also not fulfilled which gives a bad gateway 502 response now 503 service unavailable the service was unavailable to process the request due to maintenance overloading or another temporary interference there could be a possibility that the service is down and due to which the request was not able to be processed moving on to our next question which is what are the some of the drawbacks of rest apis or rest architecture now it's a very crucial and very important question because we already discuss about the benefits and what advantages rest provide but it could be a tricky question that what are the disadvantages that rest provides or rest has so you need to explain it in detail so we discuss multiple times statelessness that rest provide the benefit of statelessness where the client and server does not store each other's states information now it can be disadvantages also sometimes rest does not preserve the data in other words the server does not record any data about the past interactions of the user or the client now if preserving state is necessary that responsibility falls back to the client itself now the client need to store the state if it's a mandatory thing to run the, the whole system so the preserving state is a necessary situation then the responsibility comes completely to the client and the server uh, since it's a rest architecture the server cannot help here additionally rest is also less strict with its security measures than the soap soap with the protocol that we discussed earlier so developers while developing rest architecture by include while you know making rest apis they need to be very cautious and only work with legitimate apis uh apis from legitimate sources or reputable providers because of security concerns now this is one of the reasons why rest is a poor choice for sending confidential information between the servers and the clients so rest architecture is not being followed where there is a sensitive data being involved or sensitive data transaction is involved between the clients and the servers so these are the uh, you know drawbacks of rest architectural fa- or rest framework that you should keep in mind i hope folks were able to understand a bit about the rest framework from this video if you have any doubts you can comment down and let me know for the next video what you can expect is we'll be talking about interview questions related to express js which is very popular framework and mongodb which is a very popular uh, no sql database so we'll be discussing about them in the next video till then bye bye take care and if you have any doubts make sure you comment down and uh, if you want to learn any new topic please comment down that as well thank you bye bye take care